This tutorial is going to just walk you through how to launch a U20L onset hobo water level logger. Um, so this is the step you would take before going out into the field potentially uh, and setting up your discharge monitoring station. Alternatively, if you have a field laptop, you can bring your laptop into the field and perform this step in the field. Uh, either way, it's pretty quick and this should walk you through the steps you need to take. So first thing you need to do is you need to have Hoboware Pro software installed on your computer. Um, open that up. This will be the screen you'll, you'll open up to. Um, as you can see down here in the lower left part of the window, it says the device I'm attached to is the Hobo Waterproof Shuttle uh, with, the, with the serial number. So you're going to need a, the, in addition to the pressure transducer you're launching or setting up, you'll need to have a shuttle and a specific coupler. Um, for more information on that, you can look at the vignette. It'll show you some pictures of what that looks like. Um, but it, what you can see here is that I am attached to that shuttle currently. Um, I'm going to take the pressure transducer I'm interested in launching, fit that into the coupler, uh, press the button that tells it to talk to each other. And here in a minute, the bottom, we went from shuttle to no device. And now we can see I am connected to the U20L04 water level serial number 109, blah, blah, blah. So I'm connected. Great. Uh, from here, it's pretty easy. Just go to the device tab, launch. Uh, and it's bringing it up off screen. So let me just drag it on for you. Um, and sure enough, this is the one I want to communicate with. Click OK. Um, Oh, good. So this is telling me that I'm actually currently storing data on here. Uh, this has been launched previously. Uh, so if I begin launching now, it'll erase any data that's on there. I don't care what's on there previously. It's not important. So in this case, I'm going to click yes, continue. But generally speaking, if you see this screen and you are collecting data in the field, you will want to click no, and instead you will go through a different process, which is downloading the data, which will be the subject of the next tutorial. But for now, I'm just going to click yes. Let's pretend that this is a brand new data login. I click yes, and I get this screen here, the launch logger setup. This will just remind me what the name of it is. The name is just the serial number. You could rename it if you'd like to. Um, I don't tend to do that. It'll tell you what your battery status is. It'll tell you what's going to be logged, in this case, pressure and temperature. Um, and here's the other, here's the important, here's the important part. These won't change, just make sure they're both checked. Um, you don't need to go into the filters box. It's not that important. You, but you do need to come down here and select the interval. Uh, the interval you're logging at depends on your project. For this application, 30 minutes for what I'm needing this for, I'm going to select 30 minutes as my long interval. Um, that's the first important thing, and you can see how the, adjusting this will change how many days worth of sampling you get. If you sample at, uh, as should be expected, if you sample at a 10 minute interval, 10 second interval, you're only going to log two and a half days, bump that down to 30 minutes, and all of a sudden we've got 1.2 years. Number of samples should remain unchanged, um, but that's an important thing to be aware of. And the other very important thing to be aware of for these sensors is when to begin logging. If you were to just click start right now, your first measurement will take place at 1241. Um, and that's not good. And the reason it's not good is because we are going to need to adjust these pressure readings with barometric pressure, atmospheric pressure, in order to calculate an accurate water level. And we need all of those readings to be at the same time. Uh, it really streamlines the data processing side of things, which we'll talk about in a later tutorial. So to ensure that all these measurements are taken at the same time, I'm going to come down to on date time. And it's probably not going to matter for you whether you end up launching your data logger right now or an hour from now or realistically a day from now. So right now, I'm just going to let it say, sure, 1 o'clock, 1300 is a great time to start logging. Um, click delayed start. You'll, oh, you'll get this little window that I just missed. Um, that'll just show you a little status bar of it's preparing to launch. It'll go away. And down here, launch successful. So this is now ready to go. If you want to confirm that, you come up here to device status. And you'll get the status box that says, yep, that, that's the one. Select again. That's what I want to look at. 
and it will say some of the things we just saw. Um, batter's good, no memory used, uh, last launched just now at 1241. It's going to start at 1300, and it's going to log at this interval. Currently, it's awaiting a start. And the reason we're getting measurements here is because I'm still currently attached. The second I take it off, that won't happen. That all looks good. Click OK, and you're off to the races. That's it. This thing is going to start recording at 1300. The next tutorial will talk about how to download data from well, is going to be is going to discuss downloading the data and making sure it's in the proper format to be entered into the access database.